What's going on, button pushers? So, you probably already know, DJI released a brand new product called the Ronin 4D. It is their take on an all-around, stabilized, full, you know, built camera. It's kind of crazy, it's very interesting, and we're going to talk about it. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. My name is David, I upload weekly, and today we're talking about the Ronin 4D DJI's new camera that they just released, and it is a very interesting product. It's really something definitely interesting. And I'm just gonna come out and say it right now, it's probably not something I'm gonna go out of my way to buy, but it's definitely something I'd wanna try someday. I actually saw a leak of this like a year or two ago, like I saw like the mock drawings and everything, and it was something I thought would be a brand new Osmo. And if you weren't familiar with the Osmo, it was like the super tiny handheld camera stabilized and everything. I had one and it was not the best thing ever. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about the camera itself first, some features that you can probably find elsewhere, but I have to mention in the video if you want to skip all of these specs and everything and just jump to my verdict and my opinion on it, just jump to this timestamp here or wherever on the screen or in the chapters that the YouTube video is going to give and just go straight to it. So there's actually three features that really make this interesting for me. One, it's going to be that LiDAR focus system, which I see is really, really freaking cool, and we're going to get into it later. The Z-axis stabilization, which is the fourth axis that they're introducing, because a lot of the gimbals we use out there are only three. The fourth axis is that walking, you know, the up and down kind of movement, that kind of yaw movement, and that's going to be stabilized because there's a little tiny arm that kind of moves it up and down, so that's really good. And the last thing is that built-in transmission system, which I do have to mention something later in the video. So those are the key highlights of this camera and I want to get into the actual build and the actual like ergonomics of the camera itself so that we can kind of get an idea of how this is going to be used how it's going to be held and kind of what it's going to feel like to be using it but before we even get into that I want to give you guys the price point of this camera because it is super important to know how much you're going to be spending especially if you're going to be listening to all these specs and everything so you can know is this really worth paying this much for so the first model the 6k version is going to go for seven thousand 100 US dollars while the 8k version goes for eleven thousand five hundred dollars and that's not including tax and we're gonna get more into it a little bit later also now for me personally I feel like at this price point you can get so many different camera combinations you can get a black magic rig fully kitted out you can get a Komodo fully kitted out and there's just so many different options out there that this might be kind of like a weird option to pick up especially coming from different systems like Canon and Sony and all this stuff because it is awesome oddly specific when it comes to a lot of things. Honestly, it just feels like I I would definitely get this if it was like a third of the price point it is because then that way it would be a lot cheaper and it would, you know, feel more feasible. So yes, this camera is super unique and it's very kind of portable. <laughs> I saw it comes with a carrying case that's very similar to the original Ronin S and if you use the original Ronin S you know how kind of annoying that case was. It was really bulky and it was disgusting compared to the new Ronin S2 case where it's super compact and easy to carry around. If you use the Zion Crane 3S Pro kit you kind of know what I'm talking about too because it's very similar to that. So you have the body itself which has the Z-arm stabilization axis on it, and then you attach the camera on top of that, and then you have the lens, the lens mount, and then you have on the body the two handles, the top, uh, top handle and on the back you're gonna have the transmission system you have the port expander and the TB50 battery adapter and then also on the lens itself you have the lidar system along with the wireless focus system and honestly based on the pictures and everything it's using it really looks like a little like C200 setup it's kind of like it feels like it looks like the same size you know just like very simple rig very lightweight and very portable except of course it's stabilized but don't quote me on that because I have not touched the 4D before. So jumping into codecs and resolutions and the camera itself, DJI has been known for gimbals and support products and they do have a few cameras that they introduce for the Inspire drones and honestly the cameras were really really nice. Based on the footage I'm seeing here for the X9, it looks absolutely amazing. The quality is beautiful, you know, I think the color is amazing as well. The camera is capable of 8K up to 75 frames per second or 4K up to 
to 120 frames per second and that's if you're getting the 8k camera otherwise you're stuck doing 6k it can record into apple prores raw prores 422hq and h264 and for those of you who aren't familiar with what any of these mean it just means that they're really amazing codecs that can save a lot of data and give you a lot of retention when it comes to you know remembering all this data in the metadata i said data a lot it just means that the quality is really good and you have a lot of control in post-production and one of the things that everybody loves to know about cameras especially when they're considering them is how well do they do in low light well this camera has a dual native iso of 800 and 4000 or 5000 depending on which camera you get it does really well in low light and it has 14 stops of dynamic range surely it it doesn't do as well as the Gemini, the Raptor, the Alexa Mini, but it does pretty well with 14 stops. This camera also comes with built-in ND filters, which is a must for today. Everybody requests it in every single camera. They request it in Reds, they have it on the REs, they have it on the Canon cameras. They're introducing them with this. This is really good for DJI because a lot of cameras just don't want to introduce it. But having built their first camera and introducing it at the same time, they're pretty good here. The camera's gonna have interchangeable lens mounts, which means that you can use you know different kinds of lenses but they do have a lens list of compatible lenses and that is uh dji's own lenses that they're going to be making like m's and some sony e-mounts the lidar system has lidar waveforms and it's just a really really unique way to get focused and kind of keep track of what you're focusing on and i really like the way it's going to be displayed based on what i'm seeing here on the website because it just looks really interesting and i feel like it's going to be very very precise when it comes down to it because when it comes to autofocus we're really relying on autofocus peaking and all this stuff but i feel like this new lidar system is going to give us a lot of different flexibility kind of like a false color kind of thing lastly storage and battery life the battery is going to last 2.5 hours each tb50 battery and they each take about an hour and a half to charge so you can keep running through them especially if you have a charger and then as far as storage goes it has cf express type b as well as dji's own pri proprietary proprietary ssd worth a terabyte. Now that we've gone through all the really good stuff, I really want to touch up on the few things that I noticed that I kind of question, that I kind of don't like, and just my opinion of the camera overall. This is where it gets kind of juicy. Please, no hate. This is just my opinion, and I would love to know your opinions as well. Drop me a comment, let me know. First of all, with the price point, this is something to really, really notice, and I kind of noticed it as I was going through. So when you look at what's in the box after you're buying it, even the 11K model, even the the 7.1k model it just doesn't include a lens it doesn't include the transmission system it doesn't include the actual monitor for the transmission system and that's just something that you really need to take into account because some people might be out here thinking i'm gonna get a lens i'm gonna get the transmission system i'm gonna get the monitor it seems like you have to buy it all separately and that is really something you need to think about because for, at the price point people are out here saying oh the red komodo isn't as good as this because the price point you can you know run this straight out of the box for the komodo you might have to rig it up but that's not true at all apparently because you need to buy a lens you need to buy that transmission system you need to buy a lot of different accessories so make sure you know what you're buying for the price that you're paying and along with that lenses again I don't think that it can handle as many lenses as some people make it out to be because you have to understand that this camera is tiny, it's on a Z-Arm axis, and it is on a tiny gimbal, which means the payload is very specific. And I don't see a specific payload as far as what they're telling me. So it, it does mention on the list of lenses that, you know, counterweights are suggested and what lenses are supported, but they're all very small lenses. Leica M's are amazing lenses. And trust me, if you can get your hands on them, you should be straight. You should should be good to go because they are beautiful lenses but you know again a lot of people can't afford like lenses and you know it's just a whole different lens that you gotta buy and again you gotta know what you're paying for now this camera is super interesting and it would make an amazing crash cam like a car mounted cam a jib mounted cam anything kind of like for a really quick setup without having to break down a bunch of things because the quality is amazing it is super light it is really stabilized and it's super simple to just set up but it isn't something that i would go out of my way to buy maybe i would rent it for a shoot because i would maybe only need it for a few shots that i didn't want to know break down a bunch of stuff or even put my whole gemini on top of a car or something in case something happened because it does seem kind of dangerous like yes you can have it handheld but at the same time i feel like some of these shots are a little bit weird you know like even with the z-axis stabilized i st still see a little bit of like 
shaky movement to it sometimes and that's kind of just dji's thing there's always a little bit of wobble for some reason but i feel like dji is one kind of late to the party and two kind of overpriced it a little bit based on what you're getting because yes it is a really amazing camera yes it has raw yes it has all this stuff but but so do a lot of other cameras but oh yes they are offering 8k yes they're offering 6k but at the same time again so do a lot of other cameras <laughs> and don't get me wrong if i had the money to just drop on this camera i definitely would it's super interesting again and the quality of video that comes out of it is super super amazing it seems really versatile and has a lot of potential but it's not something that i would go out of my way to purchase especially because i'm so invested in the canon space i'm so invested in the red space if some newcomer came along and decided hey this is what i want to invest in that would be absolutely fine like i feel like they would have a really really good use out of it based on whoever is out there right now and kind of has all these other setups and all these other rigs i feel like it just isn't a smart purchase but again let's look at this footage the quality is tack sharp it's beautiful the low light is really good it's, but you know a lot of times we're going to want to work with control lighting it's going to be so much better but if you need it the dual native iso is really going to help you out here the low light looks amazing based on the footage they're showing but at the same time it's not always about the quality like there's a lot of ease of use things that you're going to really want modularity now i feel like this camera while still a little bit modular it's not as modular as you may want it to be there's a lot of industry standard things like transmission systems different focuses and all this stuff and based on this dji is really pushing their own products and pushing it into this so it's going to be a little bit harder and of course maybe in the future it's going to be a little bit easier but starting off it's going to be very hard you know there's teradex out there there's you know tilta nucleus m's and rawcu's and there's a lot of different wireless control units, you know? And I feel like there's not many mounting points on this. There's no cages for this. It's gonna be kind of hard to put a cage on this based on the products that DJI is pushing out. And maybe it can be done. It can probably be done to be honest, but it's still very early on and who knows. Another thing is with the protruding Z arm access and the LiDAR system, it could be a little bit hard to get everything, you know, caged up and rigged. And especially if, you know, these things keep moving, you know, you never know what kind of parts you're gonna get up Constructed. Now, I definitely think that DJI has a ton of potential when it comes to this product itself. Like, it is really interesting, it is super amazing, and it is definitely something I'm gonna wanna try out and see how the footage comes out for me and, you know, just real life use because it is really interesting. And I see it has a lot of potential, but I really need to see it executed well and see if it actually survives in the camera space because it is DJI's brand new thing, and DJI isn't really known for, hey, I'm gonna buy a cinema camera from them like camera supports that's what dji is known for that and drones it is a little questionable it does have a lot of potential and i can't wait to see what happens here it isn't a camera i'd show up to like a professional shoot with like if somebody hired me for a commercial i'm not going to show up with a dji camera they're kind of like they might be like oh that's a really cool camera especially if they don't really know too much but if you have someone that's usually like really working commercial space they're gonna be like yo i just paid you like fifty thousand dollars why what are you what is this camera i've never seen in my life you know like it's one of those things like it's still fairly new and it's like showing up to a, a commercial shoot with a glide cam that where they're paying you a hundred thousand dollars but instead of a steady cam you pull up with a glide cam and like a crew of two people you know but i feel like it's a very controversial topic this camera like i've heard a ton of negative things i've heard a ton of positive things and a lot of people want to try it a lot of people making fun of it i've seen a lot of memes about it and it's kind of interesting to watch i'm kind of falling in that middle neutral part but leaning more towards the negative not as far as hating it but just you know just kind of skeptical i guess i wouldn't say it's a game changer i wouldn't say that it's um, something so out of the box that it's so worth spending 12k on i don't know just like someone in my face in my facebook group said it's a drone camera that can't be put on a drone anyways let me know in the comments what you guys think because i really love to know what your opinions are on this camera and that's going to be all for today's video guys make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you liked it just hit that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed and i'll see you guys in the next video keep pushing buttons and i'll see you then peace